Solemnity of the Nativity of the Lord, Christmas, Vigil Mass. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake I will not be quiet. Until her vindication shines forth like the dawn, and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication, and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name, pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken, or your land desolate, but you shall be called mighty light, and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. the people who know the joyful shout in the light of your countenance O Lord they walk at your name they rejoice all the day and through your justice they are exalted forever I will sing the goodness of shall say of me, you are my Father, my God, the Rock, my Savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him, and my covenant with him stands firm. Forever I will sing the goodness of the A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul reached Antioch in Pisidia and entered the synagogue, he stood up, motioned with his hand, and said, Fellow Israelites and you others who are guard-fearing, listen. The God of this people Israel chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out of it. Then he removed Saul and raised up David as king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham became the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers. 
Judah became the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez became the father of Hezron, Hezron the father of Ram, Ram the father of Aminadab. Aminadab became the father of Nashan, Nashan the father of Salmon, Salmon the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Now Boaz became the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth, and Obed became the father of Jesse, Jesse the father of David the king. David became the father of Solomon, whose mother had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon became the father of Rehoboam. Rehoboam the father of Abijah. Abijah the father of Asaph. Asaph became the father of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat the father of Joram. And Joram the father of Uzziah. Uzziah became the father of Jotham. Jotham the father of Ahaz. Ahaz the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah became the father of Manasseh, Manasseh the father of Amos, Amos the father of Josiah. Josiah became the father of Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the Babylonian exile. After the Babylonian exile, Jeconiah became the father of Sheatiel. Sheatiel became the father of Zerubbabel, and Zerubbabel the father of Abiud. Abiud became the father of Eliakim. Eliakim, the father of Azor, Azor, the father of Zadok. Zadok became the father of Achim, Achim, the father of Iliud, Iliud, the father of Eleazar. Eleazar became the father of Mathan, Mathan, the father of Jacob, and Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. Thus, the total number of generations, from Abraham to David, is 14 generations. From David to the Babylonian exile, 14 generations. From the Babylonian exile to the Christ, 14 generations. Now, this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus The Gospel of the Lord. December 25th, the Vigil Mass. The first reading comes from Isaiah 62, 1 to 5. This is a reading that's taken from the third part of the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapters 56 to 66, that were written sometime after the Babylonian exile, after 539 BC when the Israelites had returned to the Promised Land. They found it a bit of a devastation. And so, Trito Isaiah, the author or authors who are responsible for this section, talk about the fact that the Lord will vindicate Zion. He'll raise it up again because now it seems destroyed, it seems desolate, but it will once again be called by delight, the land espoused. That the Lord will consider Israel to be his spouse. He'll marry it. He'll make it fertile. The second reading comes from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, verses 16 to 17 and 22 to 25. This is part of the Kerygma, the first preaching that Paul would give in a new city concerning Jesus of Nazareth. Now it's being given in the synagogue, so it's a very Jewish tone. He speaks about the fact that the Lord brought the people out of Egypt 
And he chose Saul, but then he rejected him and replaced him with David. The purpose of this reading today is the fact that from David came a descendant who would fulfill all the promises that God had made to Israel. And in fact, this descendant had been proclaimed by John the Baptist. John said that he's not the Messiah. Another one who he is unworthy to unfasten the sandal straps of is the Messiah. Now, there's a hidden threat in this message also. Paul is speaking of the fact that Saul was chosen, but he didn't do what God willed, so he was rejected. The message to the Jewish people is that they too call themselves chosen people, but if they don't do what God has called them to do, to follow Jesus whom he has sent into the world as the Messiah of Israel, if they don't follow him, then they too will be rejected, and another will be chosen in their place. The Gospel is from Matthew 1, 1 to 25. This is from the Gospel of Matthew, a very Jewish Gospel. And so we hear the genealogy of Jesus, who is a very Jewish Messiah. The word genealogy in Greek is Genesis, which is very similar to the name of the first book of the Bible, helping us to remember that Jesus is a new beginning for the people of Israel. He's called the son of David, David being the example of what the Messiah should be. He's called the son of Abraham, to show that Jesus is truly Jewish. This genealogy begins with Abraham, who is the father of the Jews. The genealogy for Jesus found in Luke's Gospel begins with Adam, to show that Jesus has come to save all people. This one, since Jesus is the Jewish Messiah for the Jewish people, begins with Abraham. There are 14 generations and 14 generations and 14 generations. This is an example of Gamatria. Gamatria is a little word game in which you take each letter of a word and give it a numeric value. A equals 1, B equals 2, C equals 3. When you get up to J, J is 10, K is 20, L is 30, you start bouncing up by tens. When you get up to the 20th letter, it starts bouncing up by a hundreds. Each letter has a numeric value. You add up the sum total of those numeric values to give a special number for that word. For example, in the book of Revelation 666 is the symbolic number for the name Nero Caesar. He was the example of evil in those days. In this case, 14 is the symbolic number for David. D is the fourth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. V is the sixth letter. D, V, D, the consonants for David. Remember in Hebrew, vowels really didn't count. It was just the consonants that counted. 14 is the symbolic number for David. Jesus is 14, 14, 14. He is three times better than David. And that's significant because in Hebrew, there's no comparative or superlative degree. To say bigger, you say big, big. To say biggish, you say big, big, big. Jesus is the superlative of David. He is the Davidist. If you like David, you're going to love Jesus. There are a number of women mentioned in the genealogy, which was very odd because this is a Jewish genealogy. Women were normally not even mentioned. We have Tamar, we have Ruth, we have Rahab, we have Bathsheba, and we have the Blessed Virgin Mary. Now the first four stories are a little bit confusing, a little bit scandalous. Tamar committed what we would call incest, prostitution. Rahab was a prostitute. Ruth, although she was a virtuous woman, was a Moabite, a hated foreigner. Bathsheba committed adultery and possibly conspired to kill her husband. What is Mary doing in the midst of these women? Matthew is telling us that God has worked through unusual women in the past. He can work through this woman, Mary, who is the mother of Jesus. That a virgin from a know-nothing town can become the very mother of the Messiah. Mary is with child by the Holy Spirit. And her husband is a righteous man. The word righteous in Hebrew is tzaddik. And it means one who observes the law to the letter. Remember how Jesus said, you can't break the smallest part of the law. That's what a Sadiq is. Well, if Joseph were really a Sadiq, then he would have had Mary stoned because they were engaged and she's pregnant. Instead, he's only going to divorce her. So this shows that he's already merciful. And what happens? In a dream, the angel tells him to take Mary and care for her and the child. And he does that. He's obedient to the call of God, but he's also compassionate. 
This shows a new interpretation of what Sadiq is. Sadiq is not keeping the law to the letter, but rather is being compassionate. Much as at the final judgment, the division between the sheep and the goats. Remember, the sheep represent those who are merciful, those who are compassionate, while the goats represent those who are not. Joseph is told that Mary will be the virgin who conceives a son who will be named Emmanuel, quoting that verse that we saw in the first reading. This is typical of Matthew. He wants to show that Jesus is the Jewish Messiah who had been foretold in the prophets. So over and over again, he quotes from the Old Testament to show that Jesus is in fact the fulfillment. And Joseph awakes from his dream. Now, why did Joseph receive this revelation in a dream? Because he's named after Joseph. Again, a fulfillment verse. Joseph, the dreamer of the Old Testament. And therefore, he has to receive his revelations in a dream. And may God bless us.